Hey folks, it's Mangirl. Welcome back to the channel. I just received this brand new frame from Quadmilla. It is a frame for the 2024 year and it should be releasing very shortly in October. The new frame is a Gin F25. So you guessed it, it is a 2.5 inch frame. I've been flying the Quadmilla 3 inch frame for, for quite a while. I love that thing, very durable, good flyer. Now the thing with this frame is it's supposed to be a nice balance between freestyle and cinematic. It's supposed to not have any top deck frame or props in view with the O3. So that's quite the engineering uh, marvel if they're able to do that and we'll take a look and see how they managed to do that. Now for the parts and the power system, they actually suggest the same parts as what I've got here in my Quadmilla 3 inch. So these are 1404 motors. I've got a 35 amp ESC there. They suggest the O3. So a very similar setup as this will go into the Gin F25. Only difference is I'm not gonna use my lightened O3. I'm gonna do this the way that I think most folks will do it. And then later on, I'll bring in the lighter antenna, the lighter O3, and see what that does for performance. Now, although very weird to use a power system from a 3-inch and a 2.5-inch, I think the way they've done this is they're suggesting four-blade props. So I think that's how they make up for the lost uh, thrust. Let's go ahead and unbox this. This is the typical experience I've had with Quadmilla. Very nice packaging. We've got all the parts here. We've got a baby capacitor, a 270 microfarad with some wires. We've got a battery strap. And again, the battery straps that Quadmilla includes are, are very large. So I'm not even sure why they're including a battery strap of this size on a 2.5 inch. Bunch of screws, typical Quadmilla fashion, very nicely labeled. You've got the aluminum standoffs without the knurling. So they're super smooth. They look good, but they won't hold the TPU as nicely, but works fine. Bunch of more screws. We have a camera holder, typical Quadmilla fashion of having these insert washers into the TPU mounts, and they do make all the TPU prints available for your own printing. So if you don't like the green color, you can print it in whatever color you like. Antenna holder, battery pad, and you've got the arms. You can see the arms are identical, so they've managed to give you no props and no frame in view without having to use different arms for the front and back, which is great. You've got the locking piece for the arm. And I love that Quadmilla gives you these tabs. It just makes unpacking so easy. And then we've got the upper deck and lower deck. And for comparison, we can see how it differs from my three inch. So a little bit wider, a little bit shorter as well. They've also sent some additional accessories. So here we've got a bigger antenna holder. So this holds the top of the O3 antenna. Then we've got the arm guard. I don't use these. I find these are just added weight and the frame is quite durable. And finally, we've got the front bumper. So far, the assembly is very familiar. It's going together the same way as the Siren F3. So I took this piece, the stack screws, you pass them through like this. You take your second piece of the bottom deck and then it goes in like this over here. It's looking something like this. Once I open up the bottom plate screw bag, I put in the smaller screws here, larger screws there, and then you just slot the arms in. Next, you install the standoffs. So there are three different size standoffs. The really thick ones go over here above the arms. The skinny long ones are for the front, skinny short ones for the back. Let's start doing some weighing. So quad by itself, 55. Add the O3 with the antenna, 94. Add in this tiny happy model EP2. Add in some connectors and wires. Add in my SpeedDB 35 amp mini. Add in four Zing 2 1404 4600 KV motors. Add in the props they provided. Add in the gigantic battery strap. And finally, a 4S 650 HV battery pack. When we're all done, this should be around 235 grams. Right now you're looking at my Quadmilla Siren F3 after all of the lightning modifications, and you can see this thing only weighs 226 grams. So the Gen F25, we I think we'll have to do some lightning modifications because right now it's weighing more than my three inch. I were almost fully assembled. Working on this was very familiar. It felt just like my Siren F3 from Quadmilla. I have it wired up and set up exactly like the F3. That includes having the flight controller and the ESC backwards. So typically you'd have this power cable coming out the back. 
I have mine coming out the front. And the reason why I do that is I like to zip tie the power cable to a standoff. So if your, pattern, if your battery does eject, then it saves the wire from pulling off the ESC and potentially damaging the ESC. For the antenna, I cut this tube a little bit shorter. I think you probably want to go even a bit more short than this. And then I just twisted the antenna around so I gave it a good two or three turns so that the antenna cable, the excess, just got coiled up over here. And that looks okay. I went back through the assembly and I made those couple of updates. So you can see now I flipped around the capacitor so a lot more access to these solder points. I also did go ahead and I rerouted the camera cable. You probably can't see it, but it is down in between here now. I also did shorten the antenna tube, so it's a lot shorter here. So if this does move around, it doesn't interfere with anything now. The other thing I did was I remixed the camera mount here. And that's because the way it comes from Quadmulla, it has this elongated hole, so you can move the camera in and out. And what I found was that it didn't give me enough of a bite on the camera mount, so the camera was able to move a little bit, especially when I'm going ahead and I'm putting on and removing these ND filters. So I went ahead and I remixed this to close off that elongated hole and make it one set position. And I found this works a lot better. I'll give you a link to my new print file. Now let's go ahead and do the first power on. One, two, three, don't explode. Okay, that sounds good. I see lights flashing. I see the light flashing there for the receiver. It's a good sign and the O3 light is on as well. In order to install BlueJ, what you wanna do is open up your Chrome browser. It has to be Chrome. And you wanna to go to esc-configurator.com and then plug in your flight controller plus the battery. Make sure your props are off. And then click on open port selection and you should be able to see your flight controller over there. Mine is COM8, so I'll say connect. And then we see it's connected. I want to do at the very bottom, read settings. And then everything comes up and you can see I already have BlueJ on here. So I've already done this. But what you will do is you'll say flash all ESCs and then you can select BlueJ. So by default, it comes with BL Hell ES, which does not support the bi-directional D shot. So you'll say BlueJ, you want JH40, and then you'll go latest version and then select your PWM frequency. So I go 48 and then just click on flash. I'll post the configuration file from Betaflight in the video description. So if you want to follow this exact build, exact kind of setup, you can pull my configuration file. Now let's check and see how close we are to the 235 grams that we thought this will weigh. So right now this is 160. Add the battery, ooh, 229. Add the props, 235. Add in the strap. Okay, so I think we're gonna be closer to 240, all up ready to go. The flight footage you're looking at here is the raw 4K 60 FPS footage from either the goggles or the air unit on board without any stabilization. So I don't have the DJI stabilization turned on. I also did no software stabilization. This is the raw footage with a little bit of uh, color correction. I found the Gen F25 flew very nicely. As advertised, there was no frame or prop in view on both the goggle view and the air unit view. It's very important because the FOV between those two is different, but both had no frame or props. The quad flew super smooth. It was quite stable. Even the full throttle punch out was great for a quad of this size and weight. It was very comparable to my lighter and larger three inch quad from Quadmilla. I also went ahead and did a full pit tune using Pit Toolbox, which is the way I do all of my pit tuning now. And what you're seeing on the screen is the pit tune I ultimately landed on. I'll give you a link in the video description to a video of how I do my pit tuning. I also tried the stock Betaflight 4.4 tune. That flew quite well, although you can see the occasional wobble or twitch here and there. I still found that the PID Toolbox tune was more stable and less twitchy. Based on my type of flying, which is mild freestyle, I got a consistent three and a half minutes of flight on each pack. It's a little bit on the lower side of what I'm used to. I typically get about four, four and a half minutes on my three inch. 
So this being smaller, being a little bit heavier than my three inch, three and a half minutes is, is not bad. On the final day of testing, I'm trying a different set of props. Right now I've got the Jamfan 2540 props on the quad, which are three blade props versus the HQ props that Quadmilla provided, which are four blade props. The Jamfan are also a lot more pitchy of blades. So they are four pitch versus the HQ, which are 1.5 pitch. I found that the Jamfan flew quite a bit worse than the HQ props. The gem fan required a lot more throttle to fly, which resulted in a way noisier quad. And I also found that it ate a lot more batteries. So on the gem fan, I only got about two minutes and 50 seconds of flight, whereas on the HQ, it was closer to three and a half-ish. Now for those of you who don't fly 16x9, I also did a flight using 4x3 aspect ratio, and you can see even in a 4x3, no props and no frame in view on both the goggle recording and the air unit onboard recording, which continues to be great for this frame. Finally, I tested using the ultra wide mode instead of all the other footage, which was in normal mode. And the ultra wide mode is DJI's sort of a GoPro super view, which makes everything a lot wider. And you can see that even in the ultra wide, the props and the frame continue to be out of view, which again, as advertised with this frame. All right, I think that's enough testing of this frame. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.